Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick look at the new Grok 2 image creation tool and show you what it can do and kind of compare it to what else is available. I personally am a big mid-journey fan and have been using it for what feels like a very long time. If going by AI years, probably about 12 years now. The new Grok 2 is not a mid-journey killer or anything like that. Although it is using the new very high quality Flux.1 model for the image creation. One of the main reasons people have been using and talking about this image creator recently is that, unlike almost all of the competition, Grok is much less censored. No, this isn't for porn, although I wouldn't doubt that I would allow for images closer to the NSFW category, but this will also include blood and violence. So the main reason people like this is that it allows you to create images using celebrities and their likeness without much restriction. First, how do you use it? Well, if you have one of those little blue check marks on X, you already have access to it. Otherwise, you have to sign up for the premium X account, so let's take a look at what that entails. Here you can see there are three plans available. First, these are the yearly prices, so you're paying for the whole year up front. Otherwise, here are the monthly prices, which aren't actually all that bad in comparison. It's only 12% savings to go to the yearly. Looking at the plans, you can skip the basic, as it doesn't come with Grok at all, or the cool check mark. At premium, for $8 a month, or $84 yearly, that's where you gain the ability to use Grok. Do you realize that when you subscribe to these, you're getting a lot of other features for X that have nothing to do with Grok, but can be nice and useful additions. Just having the lower amount of ads is great and the possibility of getting paid for your posts could end up making you some money. But don't bet on that. Otherwise, the other option is going up to Premium Plus. This is $16 a month and $168 yearly. All of the additional benefits, as far as I can tell, are only for X and not for Grok in any way. One of the upgrades is having zero ads, so that's pretty nice. And if you're in the category of trying to get paid for posting, then this might be the way to go. But for Grok benefits, I don't see any. I was hoping that it would upgrade the amount of requests per two hours, but I'm not seeing anything on that. With Premium X membership and the ability to use Grok, you are able to put in up to 50 requests every two hours and then it resets. Well, I'm not sure if it resets or just once a request is two hours old that it drops off. I'll have to test that someday, but it seems like a very boring test. Anyway, these 50 requests include anything that you ask with Grok. So that could be 50 chat questions, or 50 images, or any mix of literally anything you ask with Grok. Even if you don't like the response. But honestly, 50 in 2 hours is pretty good. Sure, you might hit the wall, but maybe that's a good excuse to look up from your phone and rejoin reality for a few minutes. Yes, I know this is coming from someone who makes YouTube videos about AI. Once you have a Premium or Premium Plus account, you have two options on how to use Grok and both work great. Either on x.com in your favorite browser, which should be brave, or on your phone using the X app. On the browser version, you can find the Grok link on the left side, or you can find it on the Premium page. But why you would go to it that way when the Grok option is still right there on the left, I don't know. Looking at the mobile app version, you can find the link down at the bottom. I honestly think both options work great, so I'm going to start off with the mobile version, but as I go along, I'll point out the desktop browser version of specific features so you can understand the corresponding options. Since I have both up right now, here's what they both look like when you first open up Grok. The mobile version is a bit less detailed, but the extra stuff that's on the desktop browser version are really just introduction tips. You can see with the browser version that it has a couple random options for image creation to give you an idea of what it can do. It also mentions just below it that the images are created with Flux.1. While the mobile version doesn't even mention anything about being able to create images. Otherwise, the main difference is just the layout. Now back to just the mobile version to start off with. Simply tap in the text input field at the bottom where it says ask anything. Then you can literally ask it anything but we're here for pics. So to start off, I like to go with something very simple. The first thing you want to type in is create an image of, or make an image of, or something similar to that effect. And that will let Grok know that you want an image created and that you aren't asking a question or something else. 
So again, to start off, I'm going to go with create an image of a young woman with a black jacket. And hit the little send button on the side there. And there you go. A young woman with a black jacket. Without being specific, Grok or Flux is just going to fill in the blanks with whatever it wants. So here's the part that I really like about using Grok to create images. Everything is additive or subtractive. Or actually transformative too. What I'm trying to say is that you can just tell Grok how you want to change things. First we'll tell Grok to give her a white t-shirt and jeans. And that's exactly what we get. It doesn't change the literal picture that was there before to whatever we've asked to change, but instead it changes the prompt and gives a new image based on your additions, subtractions, or transformations. Now let's make sure that the jacket is always leather. Now it's a leather jacket, but we run into our first issue with Grok. Before, it was a black jacket, and now it thinks we just want a leather jacket, and didn't realize that we wanted to keep it black still. So we know that it changed the prompt. Easiest way to fix this is to just tell Grok again to make it a black leather jacket. And there, that's now fixed. But now we've run into the other problem that I created by letting the autocorrect change t-shirt to just shirt. This beauty is definitely not wearing a t-shirt. So same thing as with the jacket. And fixed. Moving on, let's give her dark purple hair. Done, but I'd like it to be a little shorter, so let's make it shoulder length. The great part here is that because I just changed the hair, I can just say, make it shoulder length, and it understands what I'm referring to. Sometimes Grok is super smart, and sometimes, well, not so much. One thing that's annoying is that when I first started using this, it would tell you the updated prompt every single time you updated the image. Sadly, it doesn't do that anymore, and if you want to know what the prompt being used is, you have to ask, which uses up one of your 50 interactions. I'm going to check in on it now and see what the current prompt is. The main reason I liked it is that sometimes when you get a lot more detail in the prompt, it will randomly delete or change parts in order to fit whatever new request you've asked, and now you won't know immediately without asking. Kind of like how the black jacket became a leather jacket and we lost the black part of it. Now let's give her an actual location. How about a restaurant? She is now in a restaurant, but let's make it a very fancy restaurant. I'm going to do a few more changes here, so just watch what I type and see how the images change. This one didn't seem to change all too much, so I'm going to check in on the prompt here to see how accurate it is for what I've asked. So because I just asked for a change in weather and not the time of day, it kept it early morning, therefore adding sunny and bright didn't do too much, so I'm going to change it to noontime. That's definitely much brighter and doesn't look like it would be early morning. Again, I'm going to do a few more in a row, so just watch the changes. seem to work. I'm not sure if it wasn't enough info for Grok to understand, or if the auto edition of of messed it up. I'm going to try that one again. Yeah, that turned out much better. But now I'm noticing at this point a pretty big issue. She no longer has shoulder length dark purple hair. But before I check the prompt again, I instead am going to switch over to the browser version and continue from there. And to do that, you have to tap on this little icon that looks like a counterclockwise rotating clock. This will bring up the list of all of your previous chats that you've had with Grok. First, here you can see how it looks on mobile. And then here you can just tap on the line with the conversation you want to continue. 
Or if you tap and hold, you are given the option to either rename the conversation to whatever you like, which might be a good idea for when you want to find a particular conversation later on. And the other option is to just completely delete that conversation. So be careful with that one, as I don't believe there is any way to retrieve one you've deleted. And now, looking at the desktop browser version, you click on the same button that's in basically the same spot. But before I do that, let me just say that the other button there next to it, which is also on the mobile version, is to start a completely new conversation at any time. This could be useful if you want to keep things more organized, especially if you're naming each one. So now, tap on that clock history button, and here's what we get for the desktop browser version. Okay, so here's where it's different and why I had thought things had changed. It does give you the prompt that it uses, but apparently only on the desktop browser version. So I guess that's the point for this version over the mobile one. I'm really not sure why it would be so difficult to display it on the mobile version too, but decisions have been made. Before I continue, I'm going to talk about a couple other things as far as the interface goes, and if it has a corresponding version on mobile, I'll show that too. First, you can see underneath any of the images and responses with the prompt's five icons. The first icon is to copy the text. So whatever Grok generates in response to you as far as text will be copied and put into your clipboard or whatever the Windows equivalent thing is. The next is sharing. I really don't understand this one because if you choose copy link, it literally just copies the text. There's no way to actually link these chats to other people. The regenerate icon will do exactly that. Whatever the question was that you asked, it will regenerate a response from Grok. This means that it will give you an answer to the question you asked in maybe a different way. Or, more importantly for what we're doing here, it will give you a completely new image based on the prompt. But do realize that when you use this, you will lose the version you already had created. Last, we have just thumbs up and down. So, like or dislike the response you get. I believe this is more for X to learn whether or not it's doing a good job or not. And maybe they use the information to improve the system. That's just a guess though. I don't believe it does anything to directly benefit the user. But now, back to the whole idea of losing an image if you regenerate. But maybe you don't want to lose it forever and you want a copy of it. Well, that's where you simply right click the image and save it. On the mobile version, you instead tap and hold down and you'll be given the option to save the photo or copy it. You'll also notice on the mobile version that there is one more icon below the Grok responses. The one on the far left there allows you to directly create an X post using the image and response that were created. Why some features are on mobile and some are on desktop browser, I have no idea. The few differences I brought up here seem like it would be very easy to have on both. Anyway, back to the desktop browser. The whole point is to see that even between devices, you can continue from where you ended any of your previous conversations. So here, back with the black leather jacket girl, especially now that we can see the prompt, it has changed a lot, so let's see if we can fix this a bit. First, let's fix her hair. I'm not sure where the street lights were added, but those are completely unnecessary, so let's remove those. Just be specific when removing or replacing a part of the prompt by telling Grok with quotes. So here we'll put with street lights in quotes. Perfect, now that's gone. And we want more snow, so we're going to try this. I'm going to also remove many people from the prompt because I already had asked for a crowded sidewalk, which is still there. It's just repetitive at this point and leaves other parts of the prompt open to be removed or changed with later requests. The covering everything didn't really seem to work, so I'm going to change that to piles of snow. And here's where Grok apparently has a brain fart. It just seems stuck trying to answer and you can see the three little dots cycling. If this happens, the first thing you should do is copy what you last typed if it was something you'd prefer to not have to type out once again. Then hit the little stop button on the right side of the ask anything input field. Then just paste or type your request in once again and you should hopefully be good to go. That looks much better with the snow now. 
at least much closer to what I was envisioning. But for some reason it removed the white from the shirt in the prompt. But I also noticed that when I removed many people earlier that it changed the t-shirt to a tank top. I'm okay with that change though. So now, fixing the color. I think that's enough for the snow. Let's uh, make it rain now. It's raining, but for some reason her hair isn't wet. So let's add that too. I think that's about enough with this young lady. He's been quite the trooper. Before I stop with the images, here's one more thing. If you don't want to create a new conversation, but you do want to start with a clean slate for an image, just type in nearly the exact same thing as when you first started. But instead of create an image of, use create a new image of, and then add in what you want. Just like this. And that's all there is to it. I could easily continue going on forever, changing the image and prompt around, but I think you've seen more than enough to be well on your way. And before I forget, I guess I kind of forgot a basic piece of information. The resolution that Grok kicks out these images in is 1024 by 768, which isn't bad. It's a high enough resolution to do quite a bit with, or to at least get a good upscale from afterward. But really the main issue is that that's the only resolution which means that it's a fixed aspect ratio. So you're stuck with a four by three image with everything you create. I've tried all different types of questions and prompts with Grok and he will not change the image aspect ratio. Hopefully this is something that will be added eventually. But for now, if you want a nice landscape 16-9 ratio for the TV or your desktop wallpaper, or if you want the opposite portrait or a taller 916 for mobile wallpapers, or whatever other use you might have. This just isn't a current possibility. You have to plan ahead and realize you're going to need to do some cropping. Grok 2 now has a perfect, simple to use image creator built in. It's not going to be used for too much professionally, but it's a lot of fun to play around with and has a lot of room to grow. And remember that if you're paying for this, that it comes with a bunch of other features for X Premium. The quality of the images that are produced are just as good as any of the other AI image creators out there, including Midjourney. However, because it's as simple as it is, it's lacking a ton of features, and I will currently be holding on to my Midjourney subscription. Tell me in the comments below what you think about this new AI image creator that's been added to the plethora of options out there. Do you see yourself using it? Are you already using it and creating awesome images of your own? Let me know. In the meantime, as always, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.